Good morning, folks. This is Deb. You know, it's uh, about quarter or six in the morning, and I've got to be out of here in about an hour. So I just want to spend a few minutes talking about the women who voted in this election. Now, I'm not beyond moving past this. I am. But, you know, AOC met with the people uh, who voted for her and voted for Trump. And her basic message to them was, I'm listening. And, you know, that's important for um, for AOC to do because she is an elected official and that's what the hell you do. You run town halls and you try to figure out what went wrong so it doesn't go wrong again, okay? And, you know, I get that people can have problems with a political party at any time in their, in their voting career, in their voting life, because I certainly have had my issues with the Democrats. And the problem we're going to have all through life, as I have learned from my very young days, because I've been doing this for a long time, is that you're never going to have perfection anywhere in the government or in your personal life, okay? Because anytime human beings are involved, we are subject to some of the biggest mistakes you could possibly make. But it is not my job to listen to them. It is my job to sit here and explain to you what my interpretation of a lot of things is. And I can be scathing because you know what? I can, and I will be. Because this was not just another election, okay? We now know looking back that 2016 wasn't just another election, but I have to confess to you, I and many other people I work with never thought for a million years, A, that this asshole was going to be elected the first time, and B, realize just how virulent he was. At that time, we saw him as a, quote, carnival barker. That's what we used to call him, a reality TV show carnival barker. And now we look back, and that was a very large miscalculation, just like our miscalculation in this election cycle that women had each other's backs. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about. Now, you know... Just let me say this. White women didn't vote for Cam Kamala Harris, okay? I'm sorry, but to me, there's an element of racism in there. And, you know, I'm sorry, but we can we can dig deep now and find all the little things that pissed off these women about the Democrats, whether it's Palestinian rights, and we'll talk about that in another video, because that's all gone now. Um, or, you know, I, I don't know what it could be, frankly. The, the economy. Let's talk about the economy. Okay. Let's make it that we can make, we can make it feel, make you all feel better by complaining about the price of bread and milk and gas, maybe, which quite frankly, I'm paying less now for gas than I was before the pandemic. But what women didn't do was have each other's backs. And I suppose for white women, I don't know what I would have expected from people who spend their time watching, you know, the real housewives of whatever city and town they're in at any time or the Kardashians or whatever they're watching. Okay. Whatever little, you know, wine parties they have and with their friends. Okay. Um, but this is the thing. So you vote for AOC and then you vote for Donald Trump. And essentially you're throwing every other woman under the bus. Understand this. Okay. We're talking about, you know, solidarity. We have a group called Women in Solidarity for Choice. We don't have women in solidarity in this country. Okay. We don't. Right. We didn't at this election. In this election, we did not. Okay. And then we had women in um in other states vote for the ballot initiatives to protect abortion, but then voted for Donald Trump. I mean who's going to pass a national abortion ban. So just understand, just understand here. What you did was you voted to protect your abortion rights in your state. But you did not give one iota of a thought to the countless women who have bled out in parking lots, gotten sick and died of sepsis. And, and there have been, I'm going to tell you, there have been more than have been reported. All right. But I've reported on several of them in just the recent past. And there are stories out there about other women who have suffered not only indignities, but great pain in their lives because of the draconian abortion rights that came out of Donald Trump's overturn of Roe. So don't ever forget that you voted for a guy 
who was the genesis of the misery of many women in this country. And somehow I can't wrap my head around that long enough to forgive you right now. Maybe I will at some point, but it isn't happening today. And it probably isn't going to happen tomorrow. And it may not happen by Christmas. Now, it just has to be said, because what happened here went beyond being short-sighted, okay? Because everybody who voted in this election understood what they were voting for and who they were voting for. And now as we watch appointments being made to cabinet positions, just exactly what kind of government you chose. So I, I'm here to say shame on women today. I'm getting it off my chest, okay? I'm going to try not to bring this up again because... It's just aggravating me no end every day. But the notion that women have each other's backs in America is a fallacy right now. Maybe we can change that. But I've seen videos from women around the world who understood what was going on here and who sent videos to the women of America saying, we're standing with you. Well, you know what? Hell, we didn't have to have all of those videos happen had you done the right thing and you did not do the right thing. And that's what I'll close with. I will talk to you guys later on this afternoon. I probably do have another video to squeeze in. And I hope you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.